Hi, Captain Mike here with you again on a real quick video on how I do a batch of, of my soap. Uh, the only reason I'm doing this video is because it will tie in the previous videos I've done on uh, the colored shreds and how I made those and uh, additives such as goat milk and, and things like that and the latest one on how I, how I did this uh, mold right here. Uh, so I'm going to do a real quick batch and explain it as I go along and then you'll just see how I do it. And I also need to prepare a loaf of uh, soap to finish up a video that I'm fixing to do on my soap uh, slicer. So we'll start off and this is uh, 47 ounces of my master batch oils, which is uh, the oils I mix together. And they start off like this. I, uh, I do a lot of them in a big huge pot and then I weigh them out and all my oils together blend it up heated then I, I uh, um, weigh out 47 ounces and I put it in bags or uh, containers and then I freeze it and when I need it I get it out and I, uh, I weigh it to make sure I got it right I heat it and that's the way we go so we'll take my bowl first thing we do Pour in the master batch oils. It's got all the good stuff, olive oil, shea butter, cocoa butter, coconut oil, PKO, uh, shortening, uh, vegetable shortening, on and on. It's just, it's got all the good stuff in it. Uh, then I get my blender here, and when I cut this blender on, I'll stop talking for just a minute. So I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. The first thing I'm gonna put in here is the uh, uh, coconut milk powder, and I'm just gonna sprinkle it around and this is goat's milk powder. And the reason I use goat milk powder, I mean the goat's milk in powdered form is I don't have to uh, maintain it. it uh, uh, it's in powder form, I can freeze it, and there's really no difference. I, I have noticed no difference. Some of you that use goat's milk may, and that's fine, your recipe may different, be different than mine, but I don't have any problem with it. So I, that's the first thing I'll do, and then I will mix this up really good. Okay, now I'm going to add a, uh, um, uh, a, a teaspoon of uh, um, titanium dioxide. It just makes the, the base a little bit whiter because the patchouli, which is a fragrance I'm going to use, is uh, really dark. And if I don't, then the soap comes out dark. So the titanium dioxide will help lighten the soap up. That's all it does. You'll blend that until you've got all of your lumps out of it. And once you've got your lumps out of it, you're ready to put your, uh, your lye solution, which is uh, one part sodium hydroxide to, to two parts of water, which is a 33% 33 water, 33 water discount. Uh, and uh, if you do soap, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, as soon as you start learning to make lye solution, you'll understand what the discounts are. Now, as I pour this soap in here, excuse me, as I pour this lye solution in here and blend it, this stuff will start to get thicker. So, just kind of hope it'll show up. Okay, that's uh, reached the right consistency for me. Um, and see if I can kind of show you. You can see it. It's, just, it's dripping. It's, it's thicker than water, a little thicker than buttermilk, uh, which is exactly how I want it when I add these colored shreds. And uh, I'll do that in just a second. But the first, next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our fragrance so we can kind of blend it in. Now, patchouli, if I remember correctly, does not make the soap base move very fast. And by that, I mean it, it doesn't make the base start to set up and turn to soap. Some fragrances like florals do. You'll pour it in there. You've got seconds to work with it before you get it in the mold. But let's just see if I remember this correctly. I usually use a whisk for the fragrant oil, and I just reuse it long enough to blend it, and uh, then I'll put my shreds in. So I just kind of do this. Don't make a lot of patchouli. Stuff has went crazy expensive lately. Uh, well, actually, in the last few years, it's went crazy. I think I checked on it the other day. It's something like between sixty and seventy-five dollars. A pound of real patchouli. Uh, 
so I don't I don't push a lot of patchouli soap because I get the same thing for it that I do for my regular soap. Okay, now you see it turned it kind of a cream color, and it's blended really good, really well. And then what I do is I take my soaps resin. and you see I blended black, uh, red oxide, and some yellow. And those are the three colors that I think go well with patchouli. And I just start to shake them in here and blend them up. Now this is where if your soap, the fragrance you put in your soap makes the soap act fast, move fast, start to seize, you've really got to move because before you will get this stuff blended in, you'll have what we affectionately call soap on a stick. You'll pull your whisk, your whisk out and you've got a chunk of soap on the end of it, the whole bowl of it. It does set up that fast. Rose is particularly bad. Some of the other florals are just as bad. Uh, patchouli is doing great, absolutely wonderful. The color is good and it's mixing. Doesn't take much. You just want to make sure you've got soap around all those little shreds. And then you'll pull your mold over here and you'll pour it in. Get, get all my stu stuff here together, just like this. I take it, I pour it in, and let it run pretty quick so it doesn't form a lot of air bubbles. And when the mold is almost full, I scrape what's left down here into the bottom of this. You can see what I'm doing here. Not a real big deal. All you soap makers know what I'm doing. We don't waste anything. I'll try to get this in the mold, and I, it will go. I know it will go, and I, most of them do. All right, then I just kind of top it off like that. Actually, I want the soap to be just a little bit above the top of the mold, if I can get it that way, because I scrape the tops off my molds, and it, you know it, it makes the bars a lot nicer. Once you get that done, you take it, bump it just a little bit, And that is how I do my soap. That is a loaf of patchouli. It's ready to go in the uh, styrofoam cooler with a heating pad in it. I'll leave it in there overnight. And tomorrow morning, if I do the other video, I can show the unmolding of this and I can put it in my cutter and I, that I'm making and I can cut it. So y'all look forward uh, to that video. <laughs> I say look forward to it. Y'all just uh, be ready for that video. And uh, I appreciate you for watching this one. And uh, if you found this interesting, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it.